Hello everyone, this is Thomas, and thank you for tuning in for episode 38 of our weekly update. Now let's dig in. Storms wreaked havoc across the Texas coast this week, flooding roads and inundating the region with heavy winds and rain, which brought down the cameras and sent most work at Starbase to a screeching halt. Workers have done what they can at the launch site and have begun installing outer cladding on the lower levels of the launch tower. On Wednesday, after what appeared to be a successful testing campaign of the interstage test tanks, workers picked up the test articles off the can crusher, first neatly folding back the ropes over the top, then removing the top hat off of the Starship aft skirt test article. Afterwards, they removed the Starship test article off of B6.1, where it still stands atop the can crusher. Over at the Cape, thanks to Spaceflight Now, we can see at Launch Complex 39A, the new drawworks hoist for the integration tower was installed, as SpaceX continues to prepare the pad for Starship launch operations. Just Read the Instructions was towed out to sea by Bob for SpaceX's second attempt to launch the CRS-26 mission after scrubbing for weather. Although CRS-26 wasn't able to launch, a break in the weather allowed UTELSAT-10B to lift off on schedule. Booster 1049 made its 11th and final flight for this mission, lofting it into a super-synchronous transfer orbit. This week, we are excited to bring you another Cape Canaveral flyover update thanks to our eyes in the sky, Greg Scott. At Launch Complex 39B, the mobile launch tower sits alone following the inaugural launch of NASA's Space Launch System. Crews have been working to save the pad and assess damage done during the recent Artemis 1 launch. Soon, the crawler transporter should roll under the mobile launcher and take it back towards the VAB for repair and refurbishment in preparation for the Artemis 2 launch, no earlier than May 2024. Nearby at Historic Launch Complex 39A, SpaceX is continuing to work on developing their Starship launch infrastructure while also continuing to launch Falcon 9s from this pad. Here we can see a cargo dragon atop its launch vehicle awaiting its launch for the CRS-26 mission. Meanwhile, crews continue to work fitting out the Starship launch tower and the supporting infrastructure including the installation of the drawworks hoist mentioned previously. Also, there is noticeably less scaffolding on the new vertical tank, which may be ready for its final dome to be installed in the near future. To the southeast, SpaceX's Roberts Road facility continues to be a hive of activity. The east side of the facility is home to SpaceX's Hangar X, where they refurbish Falcon 9 boosters between flights. Behind the hangar, we can see one of the transporters used to move the boosters around the Cape. The west side of the facility is developing the Starship production side of the site. Progress continues on the production of modules for another launch tower. Four sections of the new tower appear to be structurally complete, with the fifth module well on its way. Interestingly, we can also see that the eight new concrete pads have also been poured in the area. These pads will allow for two more modules to be assembled here, meaning that SpaceX is now set up to have at least a total of 11 tower modules assembled and staged at this location. While the first four modules are structurally complete, there is no sign yet of fitting them out with mechanicals like we saw with the previous tower. Just west of the tower production area, workers continue on the chopsticks and QD arm for the tower at Launch Complex 39A. The chopsticks seem nearly ready for installation on the tower, as they appear to have most of their expected hardware installed now. The carriage that will carry the chopsticks up and down the tower is still being worked on. Hydraulic accumulators have been installed on the carriage arms, but three of the claw-like extensions that will wrap around the columns of the launch tower are still on the ground nearby. Also, the ship quick disconnect arm has received some cryogenic piping along the side that will be its bottom once installed. Just south here on Roberts Road continues progress on the Star Factory. The steel for the final segments of the building, which are taller and allow for nose cone construction, is being installed, while the roof installation is falling close behind the steel. Unfortunately, we still have not seen any progress on the construction of the first of the Roberts Road mega bays. The steel for the building remains staged around the area, but cranes still have not started installing any of it. Transitioning further south, we can check in on Blue Origin's facilities at the Cape. The south side of their production facility is still dominated by the ongoing construction. The addition to the existing warehouse building continues to see steady progress with roof decking going on as steel continues to work toward the east side of the building. Additional ground clearing operations are ongoing in the far corner of the site for several new buildings. This corner will eventually be home to a covered storage area as well as a maintenance support facility. 
Nearby, this large smooth space will be the first part of a new composite assembly building. On the other side of the new parking area, half of the outer foundation has been poured for the new vertical assembly building. And next to that, crews are preparing forms for the foundation of the Reef Pathfinder building. On the north side of the building, it is much more focused with operations and less on construction. There is still a bit of construction in the corner though as the QCAT building, which will be used for cleaning and testing of the new Glen second stage, is rapidly nearing completion. To the southeast, Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36 sits waiting for New Glenn's launch possibly as early as next year. ULA's Launch Complex 41 is also sitting empty as ULA has no launches scheduled for the rest of the year. As early as January, however, we could see ULA's first Vulcan rollout of this hangar, just south of Launch Pad. And finally, for this week, we have a quick tour of SpaceX's marine assets that were in port for this flyover. Fairing recovery vessel Doug was spotted tied to the dock after having successfully retrieved both fairing halves from the recent Eulisat 10B launch. Nearby, SpaceX's Dragon support ship Megan awaits its next mission. And finally, a shortfall of Gravitas sits next to the dock, undergoing maintenance as SpaceX takes advantage of the recent lack of work for the drone ship due to both expendable and return to launch site launches. And there we have it, another weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by La Padre. Special thanks go to Spaceflight Now, Greg Scott and WizKid. Thanks again for watching and see you again next week.